John Story's book, Inventing Popular Culture, challenges the conventional belief that popular culture arises organically. Instead, Story posits that popular culture is a construct deliberately shaped by intellectuals throughout history. He argues that popular culture is not a reflection of real life circumstances, but rather a mechanism created by those in power to serve their interests. Story's argument is compelling due to its simplicity and reasonableness. He traces the evolution of ideas about popular culture's attributes and impacts, presenting an engaging narrative that spans from the 1700s to the present day. He identifies key impulses that shaped the concept of popular culture, demonstrating that they were driven by notions of culture's workings, its intended audience, and its desired outcomes. These notions were influenced by the authority and influence of those who propagated them. The book is particularly strong when discussing two prominent impulses associated with popular culture. Its connection to folk culture and mass culture. Story reveals how folk culture became intertwined with national identity and was idealized as an authentic and valuable heritage. During the Industrial Revolution, European intellectuals sought to differentiate folk culture from the perceived inauthenticity of industrialized society. Similarly, mass culture, starting from the 1860s, was viewed as a threat to social order, and either criticized by the political right or seen as a tool of those in power by the political left. Story highlights how concerns about mass culture were shared globally and spanned various historical periods, illustrating a general distrust of popular culture. As Story delves into the 20th and 21st centuries, he explores additional impulses behind the invention of popular culture. He connects it to modernism, postmodernism, hegemony, and contemporary practices related to consumption and aesthetics. While these sections may cover less familiar ground than the previous discussions, Story's analysis lacks a comprehensive framework for understanding culture as a whole. Only in the final section on globalization does he present a perspective that returns to the initial fascination with genuine folk culture. He suggests that globalization, by enabling people to embrace both local and global cultures, may offer a path toward a truly popular culture, characterized by plurality, diversity, difference, and cosmopolitanism. At first glance, Story's narrative appears logical. The historical process of categorizing issues, objects, and interests as popular or not has always been intertwined with power dynamics and intellectual discourse. However, attributing the invention of popular culture solely to intellectuals overlooks its enduring nature and influence. The fact that popular culture continues to captivate and stimulate discussions suggests that it holds value precisely because it challenges the idealized standards of high culture and initiates broader conversations about the workings of culture. Moreover, story fails to address why popular culture ultimately matters and neglects to explore how debates would unfold without the boundaries imposed by notions of the popular.